All right, piss and vinegar day 94, leg day. So uh, the novice program's out. It went, I, I released it a little bit later than the 100th subscriber, 120 now. Thank you for even more subscribers. Um, so it was a little late, but that's because I wrote a fucking ebook alongside it, essentially. Me being a perfectionist, I just didn't want to leave any stone unturned. And even then, I feel like I left some stones unturned that probably would have made it these are probably would have just been redundant points anyway. So um, I tried not to put too much in this fucking book and make it like a 200 page book. I made it a 63 page ebook essentially. So a free novice program for you hundred subscribers. Thank you very much. If, you, if you're a novice, a beginner or someone that's been lifting for a while, but just haven't hit the gains or strength standards that you think you should be hitting because you fucked up somehow over the last few years, which is very common. People will go years without leaving the novice stage. Then head over to that video, check it out. It'll teach you everything you need to know about getting out of the novice stage and becoming an intermediate and making a shit ton of gains. Um, and if you're not, I mean, check it out <laughs> anyway. It might, you might, you might learn a thing or two. And then, you know, the written program that comes along the video will be it's a big read, but you will learn everything you need to know about the fundamentals of training when you first start. Um, and it will also teach you how to phase from novice programming to high intensity programming. So if you're currently a novice who's at the tail end of your novice program um, and you've made some good gains and you want to learn how to switch over to hit, there are, there's a little bit in there that teaches you how to do that. But overall, uh, yeah, if, if you're a beginner novice or someone that hasn't hit the gains that you want to be hitting, go to that video, free, a bunch of information as a thank you to the 100 subscribers. Um, Anyway, yeah, so leg day today, um, the squats are going up really quickly as expected because, you know, I didn't squat for years. I only just started squatting again recently, maybe four or five months ago. I went from barely being at a squat 80 kilos for five reps, basically a novice, to now squatting 130 for five reps pretty easily. So essentially my legs are at the novice stage once again. Uh, they've been at a novice stage m numerous times, but I've always been very inconsistent with legs because I just fucking hate training legs. But now that I'm doing high intensity training, it's very easy for me to adhere to leg days because the idea of just doing leg days once a week is perfectly fine in my books, especially when half of everything but the squats is just one set to failure. That's very easy for me to work with. I'm probably going to continue just doing volume squats, not for muscular gains because the muscular games come from the squat that I do after the barbell squats. It's just a matter of ego. I just want to see how strong I can get my barbell box squat. Um, I'm thinking I'll probably get up to about 160 kilos by the end of this bulk for five reps. The deadlift, I'm not so sure. I'm just fucking really bad at deadlifting nowadays. My lower back just really won't uh, work in tandem with my legs, and it's really limiting how much I can really pull off the ground. But the squat is going up and up and up, so that's not a problem. Um, but yeah, like... If I had to do the novice program that I just talked about, where you're doing, you know, uh, squats three times a week for numerous sets, I, I just I fucking hate that shit, and I could never adhere to that. And that's kind of something that I go into in the novice program is, if you know that you can't adhere to volume, and you and or you just don't have the time for volume, then there's nothing, there's no shame in just jumping straight into high intensity. All, albeit it won't be as effective or required. You're better off doing the novice program. But if you just simply can't do it, and which I couldn't right now, like in this it, 10 years into training or whatever, I mean, it's not 10 years because I'm inconsistent, but like basically uh, for like give or, give or take 10 years, um, if you made me do a novice program right now, even if it was for the betterment of my physique and strength, I wouldn't do it because I just fucking hate volume training that much and I wouldn't adhere to it. Back when I first started, I could because I was new and fresh and I was really keen for these gains, but after you get jaded, and nowadays, um, yeah, I do high intensity and I can adhere to those leg days. So I'm pretty confident that from now on, I'm going to continue training legs. Um, it's essentially sort of shame to say that I've, yeah, I've been very inconsistent with legs, partially due to injury, due to injuries and partially due to just horrific genetics. My leg genetics suck so bad. I'd be so demoralized by the lack of gains. I would just go, fuck it. I'm just not even training these fucking things. Um, Lately, I've been making decent leg strength and leg muscular gains, especially muscle gains due to the fact I've been switching to high intensity, which is superior for legs anyway. Um, I haven't been so demoralized. The strength has been going up consistently. I haven't felt any kind of nagging injuries from high frequency or volume that would fuck with me previously with my injuries and instability for the hips. 
And so now I'm, uh, there's no issue with me training legs um, due to high intensity. So I guess this is kind of tying into the novice program. If you read through and you, you're like thinking, man, I can't fucking be bothered to do all this shit. I just, I'm just going to jump straight into high intensity. So be it. Um, something done, I always say this, but something you can adhere to that's, you know, a fraction of the, uh, <laughs> I've lost my own quote now. It's it's like uh, something that you can adhere to 100% of the time that's 80% effective or something along these lines or 90% effective. I can't remember my own quote, but something you, something you can adhere to 100% of the time that's 90% effective is vastly superior to something that's 100 percent effective that you can adhere to zero percent of the time so um yeah if you read through the novice program or you just intrinsically understand that you don't have the kind of willpower or time to run three four five hours a week volume training then yeah switch to high intensity straight away but if you can definitely most definitely do uh the novice program to start with because you want to reap those gains quick then switch to high intensity later on um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I fucking don't know what to talk about now. Hmm. Nordic curls. Fuck it. Let's talk about Nordic curls. So the Nordic curls, I'm starting to do sprints now and it'll be interesting to see as my Nordic curl gets stronger, if my sprint gets stronger, like obviously by the, by proxy of just doing sprints, I will get better at sprints. My body will make neurological adaptations and I'll get better at doing sprints. So it could be hard to really tell whether or not it's the sprints that are making my sprints better or if it's the Nordic curl. Realistically, what I should have done is done a sprint, got that time and then done a bunch of Nordic curls for like six months and then did another sprint at the same body weight or whatever and see if I was any faster. But I'm enjoying the sprints. It's good cardio. Um, and I just, I just want to see how much faster I can get. So it's not going to be an exact science. It'll be hard to tell if it's really the Nordic curl or not. But it's uh, well established now within athletes that Nordic curls will massively improve your vertical jump, any horizontal jumping, and any sprinting. Through one, injury prevention by making sure your hamstring tendons are solid. But two, because your hamstring so, uh, tendons are solid, they're much more essentially resistant and thus they can output more power so sometimes your body will limit your output based off the fact that if it keeps going it'll tear a, a muscle um but also your most your tendons are essentially what acts as a spring relative to the muscle so if your tendon is stronger and more uh essentially like a spring because it's just so coiled up and tight then you'll be able to output more uh force it's very well known that in strength sports it's it's very much muscles but it's also uh ligaments and tendons a great example of this is arm wrestling you get guys who just do strength sports like uh powerlifting or strongmen or even just bodybuilders who are tremendously strong but they're strong through their musculature whereas arm wrestlers have sort of a tendon rigidity that allows them to hold their arms in place that gives them this kind of different kind of strength. It's also sort of what ties into um, that old man strength or the the uh, what is known as farmer's strength. It's these guys aren't exactly jacked. They're not super muscular, but they're very sinewy and they're very tendon heavy because they're putting a bunch of loads on the tendons all all the time uh, through unnatural movements, but also just high impacts. Like in arm wrestling, you're getting these really fucking shearing forces for your arm from someone else putting as much pressure into their arm as possible. So you're doing these like really heavy isometrics, which a lot of farmers uh, will also do. So through these isometrics, they kind of create uh, stronger tendons and ligaments. Now, the Nordic curl isn't so much about isometric, but it is very tendon heavy. Um, there might even be something to doing the Nordic curls for an isometric movement because again isometrics are very tendon heavy so maybe i'll look into that maybe experiment with that but for right now i'm doing nordic curls for a range of motion which plenty hits my hamstring tendon you can really feel it you don't see it you don't feel it as much in the muscle hence why i then follow it up with the laying hamstring curl which is much more muscular uh, but the nordic curl is much more in the tendon so you get kind of both worlds strong muscles through the laying hamstring curl and deadlifts and stuff 
and then strong tendons through the Nordic curl. And this is important for all the different muscles. In biceps, in your triceps, etc., you should really make sure that your tendons are getting some decent work too. Otherwise, they'll come off the bone and you'll be able to output less power. Anyway, see you guys tomorrow for more piss and vinegar. Bye.